All right, you guys, I've got pen in hand and I'm ready to start. Are you ready to start? This is a bright new clear blue Monday morning. Well, not completely clear. We do have some chemtrails in the sky this morning. You know, I saw them coming across the sky when the sky was just starting to turn this nice blue this morning. And it was so beautiful to see the sunrise and see the leaves falling. Today is a beautiful day with the yellow sunrise coming up and then the yellow leaves falling off the trees. It was almost like confetti. It was like a beautiful hurrah to spring, uh, hurrah to spring, hurrah to the fall. Yes, the fall and it's beautiful. The colors are just beautiful. And I hope you're having a fantastic morning. Uh, I am having a great morning. I, I am starting a little bit early because uh, uh, no rest for the wicked. I, I work as usual. Yes, I didn't quit my day job yet. <laughs> One day I might and uh, do this for you guys full time. I really would love to, but you know, uh, things being what they are right now, uh, you know, cheers to being, you know, who you are. And here's to it and from it and to it again, because we never know when we'll be here to do it again. And I need a drink. So cheers. Mm. So I have discovered that I have been now a year, over a year. Uh, yes, or keto, well, yeah, keto and carnivore, actually. So I have been eating more meat than, say, vegetables over the course of a, a, a whole year now. And you know what? Things are pretty good. I mean, I don't feel any worse. I don't feel any better. Oh, do I feel any better? I don't know. People seem to think that I'm, I'm um, looking a little bit better. I don't know. I'm trying. How about that? I'm trying. I'm trying something different. I'm trying something new. And here's something that uh, I just tried for today. And uh, because, you know, I've been having a little bit more salt in my diet, um, a little bit of a Himalayan salt in with a little bit of lemon here. It's like so lemon and salt. The only thing missing is a bit of tequila. No, 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 no. <laughs> no tequila here because you know why? Overholds and tequila do not mix. And if you want to know a little bit more about me, check out my website, kimoverholt.com. Yeah, Overholts are, are a big name in alcohol just because we never knew how to handle it properly. <laughs> yeah, there was old Overholt whiskey. And uh, yeah, so and there are known things that go with Overholt and alcohol. But this particular person uh, usually tries to stay away from especially tequila because I've heard stories uh, from family who've drank tequila in the past and I think maybe I might have tried it once and wound up being poured into my bed at the end of the evening if you know what I mean so <laughs> just a little bit of salt water and it's kind of good for you to put some of the electric electro blah, <laughs> electrolytes in your water so that you can like you know motivate yourself to have your body move nicely and stuff. Yeah. And vitamin C. And uh, so, so because of all the meat that I eat, I don't get scurvy. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't even, yeah, no, it doesn't happen. Cheers. I hear they do that too. They, they put, put, put fear tactic, fear tactics. Can't talk today. All right. Well, I'm not a man to, to talk today. I'm not a man to, to talk today. I'm meant to, to show you some stuff about doing uh, cartoons, cartoons and uh, comics, comics, because this has been a great time uh, for, for getting back and inspired after doing Inktober for a whole month. Now in November, I'm thinking about get the, the whole comic book boot camp now that I've been inspired by my little niece and I've decided to want well, niece, great niece. <laughs> She's so great. I bought myself my own comic book, comic sketchbook, which uh, this is by, let's see, you see how bad my eyes are. So I have to look at it like this. But what it is basically is uh, shows you a little bit about how to do comics and how to start them on your own. And then gives you all the pages that you need won't have to go in order if there's something that you see that you want to start it off as the first page you make that the first page pull it out and then put another one for it be your second page and then at the end put it all together as the huge comic book that you want to sell say to your audience out there and believe me people hello if you know anybody who is in uh the, the film industry and stuff like that and uh, wants somebody that's very creative with a lot of stories in their noggin. This is where I come in. <laughs> I've got so much to put down on paper. I, I usually don't have enough time. This the time is the problem. Uh, time is a concept, of course. Oh, ow, 
right on my foot. Ow. Time is a concept. Give me a second. Yeah, see, that wasn't quite a second. <laughs> Time is all a concept. And uh, having enough of it in the course of a day always makes it very important. So anyways, let me get you started with doing a little bit of warm up, warming you up your arm for doing cartooning is always very important. So it's good to kind of like if you got something like a pencil or pen, uh, you know, do your warm up by like loosening your wrists. I, I remember watching this one guy and that's what he the Mark, the drawing guy, you know, the uh, cap, uh, so Captain Mark, you know, he had had this like little studio there and you keep on drawing drawing draw draw he say all the time <coughs> draw 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 and there was also vision on which was another one that i watched when i was young and you were probably had no idea you were probably a twinkle in somebody's eye but yeah i used to watch this one called vision on and they actually taught you a little sign language as well as teaching you how to do some drawing painting and just being overall creative with anything that you do it's been a thing that i've continued like forever so I'm going to show you just the basics of starting with doing any drawing. So make sure you have your pen or pencil or whatever you may have and an eraser of some sort. And this is a, this is a dry erase marker, dry erase eraser. So I'm with a dry erase marker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some basics and then I'm going to try and do a little bit of what I want you to do for making comic book boot camp. And we want to start doing that. We want to start designing characters we want to start designing uh scenarios and we want to start designing um how the char characters interact with uh other characters yeah okay so first things first let's get you basically starting with just a basic basic drawing okay so loosen your wrist up like i say and sometimes when you're holding your pen change the way you hold your pen to holding it like this like holding it like you're holding on to a groucho marx mustache you know, <laughs> our mustache, your cigar. Uh, um, how's it go? I shot an elephant in my pajamas once. How it got in my pajamas, I'll never know. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Okay, so you can hold it like this or you can hold it like this. But I prefer that you hold it like this because it gives you more free range when you get to doing stuff. But what your basics is what you're starting off with. We're starting basics just right now. And then we're going to see how far we get today because, you know, so much time. Time is always of the essence okay so okay basic shapes the triangle the circle the square and what i like to call the organic shape which could be anything it could be square it could be it could be like a star it could be something that you do quite often that you feel that you can reproduce many, many times over and over again for fun, you know. Like you can make a whole bunch of circles if you want to and turn them into bubbles or you can make a whole bunch of triangles and make all kinds of designs where they all kind of fit together. Kind of like that. See, there's so much you can do and you can expand it. Make it, call them nachos. Pretend like you, you paint them orange and pretend you're going to eat them kind of thing. Who knows? <laughs> you can go whatever way, direction you want to. They can be a whole bunch of different pyramids and then you can make them into a particular shape if you wanted to. But that's your choice. Whatever you want to do with organic shapes, round shapes, square shapes. Is totally your call. Change it into a rectangle. Do what you will. And uh, just as long as you're harming nobody, <laughs> that's the most important thing. And you can make them look three dimensional if you want to by just adding a few extra lines. And they can make it look like it's a box. Or you can take this and Add a couple more extra things and make it into a reflective eyeball or some kind of egg shape or something. See, you can make things into other things from other things. So this is how we begin getting into creativity and uh, 
moving along further and further. That's the basic starts. That's what you get for going. That's what you get for being a bad person. You get to learn how to draw. <laughs> no, no. Being a good person, you, you get to learn how to draw and show other people how to do it too. So let me just let me tell this. So I have a tendency of going from one side to the other. So I apologize if I get out of view here for a second or two. There we go. So I'm going to it down. Okay. And so when you get into doing cartooning, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Everything's falling apart over here. Uh, it's a nice, um, what do you call it? Uh, balance. <laughs> yeah, balance is a good way to saying it because you have to make sure that you have a beginning um, beginning of your character. You can write down all kinds of things. Oh, I'll give you an idea, okay? So I have some comic books that I've done in the past. Let me see if I can find them for you. Hold on. Hold on. Find them. I gotta find my books so I know they're here. I'll give you a little bit of an idea. I have a book that I've been working on for a while, and I'm going to start getting back into it. It's a Clive Barker book, and uh, it's called Imagica, and uh, it's a very intricate story of uh, of characters who come together, and and then unknowingly know each other. For from another time, another dimension, and then go back maybe to being the way they were. Maybe not quite the same, but uh, it's an interesting interesting story, which I am still trying to make into a graphic novel. So, But the thing is, time, of course, time always is against me. <laughs> see what I have in here. I've made all kinds of different... Uh, I have different kind of sketchbooks and stuff. So, oh, no, no, not that one. Hold on. but, uh, some of them do say uh, books on them for cartooning, but I can't forget. I remember which ones are which at the moment. Oh, okay. There's the the book, the experimental years, where it was kind of a little bit crazy. I was putting a little bit of everything. Okay, so this gives you an idea. Okay, the experimental years. I was drawing all kinds of different, and this is where, where I was getting into cartooning back in the day, showing you, like, my main one was Bella and Mina, my, my two little girls, <laughs> my two little doggies, making them into a cartoon, and I did several other cartoons from previously, and some of the things that you can concentrate on when you get into doing cartooning is practicing doing eyes, practicing doing... Uh, lettering. Lettering is very important, too. You can play with lettering in all kinds of lettering styles. Cur creating characters. Like, these are actually somebody else's character, but I, I like to draw them as well and make them my own. So, uh, these are taken from different artists, and these I drew myself but I took from from different styles of different artists, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> that kind of reminds me of my dad, actually. And there's some of my stuff that I've been trying, was trying to get into. I made a character sheet of one of the uh, characters that I like to do is called Gru, the gen genetically altered chicken. And, uh, these are some of the faces that I made. I, I made faces into a, a program and then tried to redraw them as different characters. So there's ideas that you can get for, for doing cartooning on your own. Putting them together and making making a character sheet of who these people are and what they do and making them into persons. Ah, and of course, I did my own Simpsons cartoon, uh, Simpsons uh, Evil Treehouse cartoon for, yeah. So this one's called Evil Maggie. And Evil Maggie, she's usually with Marge driving the car. And one day Snake comes out and takes the car and Maggie doesn't like that. Maggie's got 
thousands of sharp teeth. See, hoo, 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 hoo. and Snake is scared now. <laughs> and this is my cartoon. I made this. Nobody else has this one. Apparently, so, not that I'm aware of, anyways. And if if so, we'll never know. Yeah, and uh, this is like doing caricatures of people and things that sometimes you, you, you realize in life. Um, you can do character design sheets for elves. Like for, I was thinking of making a bunch of characters like a mage and, and uh, making them all doing stuff, of course. This is something I'm probably going to be digging back into now that I've found it again and been thinking about doing my own comic books again. Um, start cover page, I've been thinking of myself, different characters. Just drawing characters. Oh, Feast of the Flesh. This is one of them. This is one of the stories that I have that I was going to be making up as a bunch of campers kind of going to the woods. And it's almost like the, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Blair Witch Project kind of thing, but not quite the same. It's a little bit different. And then, that, then I got into making uh, logos for people. So that's another thing that's cool about doing cartooning is that you can come up with some cool ideas for for cartooning. Slack bashes, yeah. I did like, uh, you want to talk about drippy letters? How about that? Yes. Yeah. The Grim Reaper. Yeah, I had a little cartoon called The Grim Reaper. Had him doing a whole bunch of little tiny poses and stuff like that. When was that? that? 2010. Oh my gosh. That's what? 13 years ago. Oh my gosh. That's 13 years ago. The Grim Sweeper. We got the uh, the Dim Reaper. <laughs> we have uh, yeah. the Dim Reaper. Say your prayers. Be happy we gave you this life. Mm. Yeah, moving sideways only faster. I love this one. We'll crab on a skateboard. Crab on a skateboard. Who'd have thought it? Moving sideways only faster. Another slack bastards on a skateboard. Skate monkey skate. Skating monkeys. Oh, possessed. Yeah, possessed to skate. Yeah. I was planning on making these into uh, t-shirts and stuff, but uh, stylized writing. This is all kinds of stuff that you can do with cartooning. See, I've been thinking about this forever. So you have stylized writing you can do. Skate monkey skate, more skate monkey skate. I was trying to make a cover for a book or monkey skating. <laughs> I was coming up with some great ones. Oh, how about this? It's called a talking, skating, broken monkey. No. Oh, oops. Ever have that happen to you? Yipes. <laughs> yep, I drew that too. So this is just some ideas for you for getting started on your own. I may be getting back. Oh, so this is some, when I used to work for Henry's. Oh yeah, this is when I was working for Henry's and uh, I was helping a guy and one of, the, one of the guys that I worked with thought that I wouldn't know what to do so he butted me out of the way and decided to take my, my client away from me. That was good, I remember that day. I made a cartoon of it just because I was angry about it and it made me feel better. And I, I love styles of different people, of course. Making more comic books, of course. We're always trying. We've got different styles. And let me see. I'll show you some of my cartoons. <laughs> Dr. Freep. He might be, he's one of my cartoons that I've always enjoyed to do. And uh, I'm going to show you some of those coming up because there's a lot of them. And Alien View is one of my favorites, too. I've done a few of those, and I'm getting going to get back into that as well. So Alien View is one of my favorite. Real simple, 
mostly talking and uh, yeah, th those are fun to do as well. And so there's like ideas for logos, looking up, looking up logos, finding ideas for drawings, uh, for a drawing friends I, I know. Um, yeah, continuing comic books. So this is like stuff I had to put on the back burner for a while. And I've been thinking, yeah, I'm bringing it back. So I'm bringing it, we're bringing it, we're bringing it back. And there's a whole bunch of characters you can do with letters. Um, more monkeys. My Bella dogs. Uh, doing cartooning. Practicing your uh, Simpsons. Making comics. See? Making lettering is very important. Yeah. Making people. Learning how to draw people is very important too. Strawberry shortcake, Maddie, Carmen. And I used to do years ago a comic book boot camp for kids. And we did some of these. Justin Bieber. Oh my gosh. Justin Bieber when his face used to move. That's Justin Bieber when his face used to move. Oh my god. Ah <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Oh my gosh. And eyes and practicing different shapes and practicing doing your favorite cartoon artist and getting some ideas for doing fancy stuff and people. My husband's so handsome. And the dragons. I love drawing dragons. The dragon I tattoo that I have is mine. That's what I did. I draw faces like, you know. Draw people. Oh, and poses. That's my friend Catherine. And I did a pose of her when she was uh, doing still life. Still good at drawing people. I love drawing people. And I hope I've drawn you here for some really good information about how to do comic books and getting started doing comic books. You just got to do it. So like I show you, there's all kinds of things. You can start with doing lettering. Make your own style of lettering if you want, kind of like that. Or, you know, whoa, here we go again. Okay, stay that way then. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I've got things going on in the back of my delicate balance here. <laughs> so you can start with stuff like that, or you can do uh, what you, like, you know, if you enjoy doing a, a, a certain character. Oh, let me show you. Let me give an idea. Let me show you how I do my alien view. Have you seen the alien that I was doing? It's a very, very simple alien. Uh, he's got a shape like a bean. His head is the shape of a kidney bean. It's kind of like that. And you've got two slits for eyes. And two antennas coming out of his head with little balls on the top. And he has a happy face. He can make kind of sideways, the tongue kind of hanging out. Sometimes he has jagged, sharp teeth. All depends on his mood, of course. He's happy right now. And you make his neck. And you don't really see his body because he's usually uh, in a hole somewhere talking to you on a planet. In another world, where there may be other ones, in other holes, but you don't know yet until you go to that planet. Can I coax his head out every once in a while? And he has something to say. Better to burn out than to fade away. Better to burn out than to fade away. I got something to say. Better to burn out than to fade away. Woo! What line is that from? Well, it's from a few things. You can take it from the line from 
uh, the Def Leppard song, or you can take it from the line from the, uh, what you call it, the Highlander movie, the real cool Highlander movie, not the remake that they're going to do. I can't believe they're going to remake the Highlander. I have a better story than the Highlander for uh, uh, an immortal. So, I mean, if, if Hollywood wanted to contact me and ask me, oh, hey, do you have a good story that would make like a really, I'd be like, yeah, I have a great immortal story. I have actually, I have a few different stories that I'm going to be telling you about and maybe making it part of my comic book boot camp. I started actually a while back on it and uh, I'll give you a little bit of a hint of it, okay? So, so I started this thing and it's called Because it's really cool. I came up this, with this concept called the devil suit, right? And uh, so the devil suit is basically like it starts the, the, the host of this whole thing, of course, is supposed to be a demon of some sort. And he's like, hey, how's it going? And introduces himself, you know, pleased to meet you. Hope you guess my name. Blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> Cheers. I need a drink. Mm-hmm. That is really good. Goes down so nice. Okay. So, and so sometimes people come and take suit as being not only something that you wear. So, obviously, some things wear, some people wear something that's like a suit. And also, it can be uh, one particular thing. Which means like the a similar thing over and over and over again, uh, which it plays on this one too, or it can even mean, uh, and and it's really really simple. I played on all these ideas, a card deck, something as simple as this, a deck of cards, called the devil suit because it's a suit of cards, a suit of cards. So it could be something that you wear like a suit that you wear, um, meaning one particular style of something, a suit of, of uh, like a pattern of something, or a, like a deck, a deck of cards. And so I went with the suit with a deck of cards, a devil's suit, and it kind of had like this character, like I say, he's a demon, but he's dressed really good. <laughs> And he introduces this devil's suit, which is like a deck of cards, which are four stories. First one's called The Devil's Spade. And then there's The Devil's um, Club, which is a cool story. There's The Devil's Diamond. Which is a great story too. And of course the last one is the devil's heart. Which is a, an immense story that I wrote. So these are four stories that I wrote. All based on something that has to do with that. And when we think of the devil, obviously there's things that go along with what the devil does. He always He's always trying to be deceptive. Deceptive and false. Trying to give you something good for something bad. But you won't know the difference until it happens. The, the, uh, the, the also thing he's good at is being a trickster. So there's a little trickery involved, with a little bit of a twist to everything. So to give you an idea, uh, the Devil's Spade is an interesting story because it not only, because we're all doing another play on words here, because the Devil's Spade, a spade also can mean, like, not only just a deck of cards, but it also means, like, a, uh, a shovel, a shovel, shovel, so, shovel, a club not only just means, like, something that you beat somebody with, 
<laughs> like a like a bat. But it could also be a place, a club. That was club. The diamond is also a play on words too, because it could mean as well, like somewhere but like a baseball game of some sort, or an actual jewelry, like a piece of jewelry. And of course the devil's heart also can also be like the heart, the heart shape. Or something that uh, touches your touches you. Maybe have a little bit of sympathy. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> sympathy for certain things and thing, and that's the kind of thing. So I made story, made four stories based on. Da, 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 da. But it also the yeah yeah see so it's a play on words because that they all can mean something completely different too. That's the great thing about the language. It all depends on what, what you want it to, to describe and then go from there and see how far deeper it goes, right? Okay, so I made a great story and uh, I've got it, it's all in here because I've, I see it, I see it. I see a guy at, at a bar and he's having a rough time. And the story behind the devil spade is is basically almost like something out of an Albert Hitchcock movie. So just imagine the devil spade, the devil's club. I made it into a place where it's actually a, a club that people don't realize it's a nightclub that is actually meant for vampires. So that's kind of an interesting little twist on things. So, so devil spade is about a guy that's having a hard time and ends up having something kind of like out of the twilight zone. Yeah, it's kind of like twilight zone-ish kind of stuff. So yeah, same with the, the club, with being a, a vampire club. At the time, people don't realize what's going to happen. Um, Diamond is not just about jewelry, but it's like also about baseball. So the Devil's Diamond, I made a story, a baseball story. And it's actually kind of interesting because it does have a twist to it as well. And the Devil's Heart is a very, 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 very great story that I wrote. That I and, and I meant to, mean to put them all together as a uh, graphic cartoon. So I'm, I wanted to share this with you so that you can see where this is all going to be going. Now I already have it in my head what the stories are, and I know where where they're going. So, and they're very, very cool stories. So. I'm looking forward to sharing these with you while doing our comic book boot camp together. So <clears throat> I'm going to share that with you while we're doing comic book boot camp. And I figure maybe I should do that every Monday. We'll do a little bit of comic book boot camp and we'll push along getting characters and ideas and stories put together for a final cartoon final comic book that you can make and and I can make and we can design together kind of thing. So putting it all together is where it comes into focus. So <clears throat> you start when, when you're doing a comic book. My comic book will be like this. It will start with an introductory introductory. I love the old style comic books where you get introduced to the main main storyteller. Because it could be anything. I remember when I used to uh, read comic books, it was always like three scary witches or something that would kind of like, you know, look kind of creepy. Maybe uh, it was um, like, so there's like three witches. Or there was, um, was there else? My comic books that I like to watch. There was also like one main guy. Uh, oh, 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 of course. Um, the two, the brothers, um, Cain and Abel, right? The basic story of two people at different ends of the spectrum. So there was there was those kind of things. And the witches were always like the ones who 
projected how things were supposed to be evolving and uh, Cain and Abel, they were two of the, the people that would always be, they related to each other, but always against each other in, in a weird kind of way. They loved each other, but they hated each other too. So, <laughs> and uh, these are the, the, the characters that kind of stylize how the book continues. Oh my, I feel a sneeze coming on. <laughs> anyway, so there's always be some kind of thing. The three wishes would represent the uh, the uh, the maiden, the the mother, and the crone. For those of you who know a little bit about witchcraft, too, a little bit about Cain and Abel, and of course, sometimes people will use either they could you could do gardens and. The devil if you wanted to if you <laughs> if you wanted to make it that that kind of a thing but that's going a little over the top you try to keep it as subtle and and as interesting as possible so witches are kind of a neat thing to have uh, they they kind of like use their spells and kind of come up with ideas or just somebody who's like a main storyteller like i When I began my journey as a storyteller, I am the main storyteller. It could be me. I could do uh, my own a caricature of myself, kind of. And, and make it just make it me. It could be anything. So, but whoever's telling the story of the whole comic book that's the person who's the who's the the honorary <laughs> or you just do the stories or you just do the stories because you could just make it the stories and like i say you make your basic outline to start make the uh, the title and, oh. and this is the basics for doing comics the title establishing shot And then we introduce to the character, have all kinds of things that the character maybe does, have some kind of main issue going on. Action that happens kind of thing. And then like have the final ending. Whatever happens at the end happens, kind of thing. Or you have it happen in here, and then you put the end. You know. It ends there. But you can continue having a uh, whatever is happening. Like you meet the character, you, you see the conflict, you see the progression, you see what happens. And then you see the outcome, the conflict, and who comes out a hero at the end. Or do they? Or is there a catch to it? That's always the fun thing. You know, I've always wanted to be a director of movies because I always have so many great ideas for movies. And uh, I don't know. I don't even know where to start. Like, it's, it's just one of those things where I've just, it's been in me forever. I don't even know how to get it out anymore. <laughs> but I try. I, I Like I say, as you can see, that even 10 years ago, we were doing comic books. I was trying to get the comic books out there. That's what I want you to do. That's what I want you to know. But there's all kinds of stories out there. You don't have to go for the same old, same old. Like the remake of Beetlejuice, the remake of Highlander, the remake of, like, why? Why? There's so many other good stories just as good and just as pertinent and maybe even more pertinent today. But, of course, they won't allow that. No, no, no. You have to keep everything uh, uh, to their rules. Yeah. 
ours don't apply because we're not in that group. <laughs> like George Carlin says, um, we're all part, uh, they're all part of a, a, an elite club and we're not in it. And that's unfortunate, but you know, just getting you started with a little bit of stuff is where I want you to be anyway. So I appreciate you coming out today and cheers to you one more time. I just wanted to say that I'm grateful for all of you who come and hang out and do a little bit of uh, exercises of cartooning with me on Cartooning Mondays. Cheers. Delicious. And it keeps your legs from cramping. Isn't that worse when you feel bad when you when you're trying to get stuff done and your legs start cramping on you or you don't your body doesn't want to do what, what you want it to do? <laughs> okay, so before you go, uh, let me play you a little, let me play you out. And like I say, if you want to know a little bit more about me, and I do take commissions. And please check out my website, kimoverholt.com. I love you guys. I really do. Let me play you a nice little song before you go. Uh, I've been trying to... Trying to learn a little bit of motorhead. It's, it's, it's not easy. So I had that chance to practice this week. I've been, been too busy, but... I'm still working on the motorhead thing, and I want to leave you with a little bit of uh, some of my favorite little songs that I have to play. Uh, yeah, Christmas is coming, so I'll play you the uh, what, I, <laughs> what what my husband calls the date rape song. You might know this one, I, and hopefully I can get it all complete, but there you go. You'll we'll see this. Give me a couple more days. <laughs> I, hey, I might have a day off. No, there's no rest for the wicked. No rest for the wicked. And I appreciate you being here. And again, KimOverall.com. Please look me up. I do have stuff. You know, you can commission me to do some stuff. It's still early enough before Christmas that if you want something for Christmas, drawn by me. <laughs> Contact. All right. Other than that. Stay out of trouble, you crazy buggers, and, and I will see you in the next one. I hope to